Hi, I'm Bruce Marshall from Emerson Swan, and I'm here with my good friend Jim Seamus, also from Emerson Swan, and we're here to talk to you about some issues that are growing in importance today, and that's system water quality. But first, we need to talk about a little bit about the past and see where we've been. Jim, what are some of the problems that you're seeing? Bruce, no better to start with the past than with you because you probably have quite a bit of experience with the, the past and older systems. I have. I so have. let's take a, an example of a typical system that was installed 25 years ago. And, and what did that have for components? What kind of boiler was primarily used back then? A cast iron boiler. Cast iron boiler. And what type of piping did you have connected to that cast iron boiler? Typically it would be some steel piping and then copper into yep, copper copper baseboard. into copper baseboard. And a typical system like that would last how long? Forever. Exactly. And have things changed nowadays? Have they ever. Bruce, a lot of the modern boilers that are installed today are made up of stainless steel heat exchangers. Those stainless steel heat exchangers have extremely small passageways. What are some of the other materials that are used in today's modern hydronic systems? Well, in addition to stainless steel, we have cooper nickel, we have different grades of stainless steel. We have 304, we have 316, we have 439. So there's three different types of stainless steel that are, that are available. So speaking of types, then you have brass types. So have you brass. have low lead brass, right. you have these uh, red brass, you have cast brass. So I guess you have plenty of different options that way. And with the new law coming into effect in 2014, we'll probably have a few other That's right. materials. And don't forget, we're installing these new boilers in old systems which still have the cast iron and the steel and the copper. What's amazing is most of these new systems that are going in, usually the consumers want a little radiant heat. So you can imagine what happens when you take an old cast iron radiator that may have been filled with some rust particles or what have you, and then you put in some small diameter passage tubing, which the consumer's looking for. I would imagine that would uh, set yourself up for a little bit of a problem. Sure does. What do you think this problem comes from? This problem comes from an age-old problem that's been going on since the dawn of time. It's called galvanic corrosion. So Bruce, what's the difference between galvanic corrosion and regular corrosion? Good question, Jim. The difference is regular corrosion is when ferrous materials come into contact with oxygen. I guess rust would be a byproduct of that. Rust is exactly it. We make rust. Very familiar to everybody. Galvanic corrosion is when we have dissimilar metals coming into contact with each other, and then a catalyst is added to this. I guess the catalyst in a hydronic system would be the water. It sure is. And here's a good example. In this little jar, we've got all the elements of a heating system. We've got cast iron, we've got copper, we've got aluminum, and we've got steel. And there is what happens in your heating system when we stir it up. That is going on in every heating system out there. You're all familiar with that black water. That's galvanic corrosion, and one of the products of that is iron oxide magnetite. 